So I did my last video and there were some comments in the comment section I'd like to address and some things that I would like to um, clarify and some things I would like to share. And one comment left to me said, I suspect you might be mixing two issues there. One is sex worker safety and another is the safety of homeless people. There is no mixing of the two issues. That is the issue. And a lot of people tend to forget that survival sex work means sex work you're doing for the sake of your basic survival needs. And a lot of times that involves homelessness. There is no conflation. There is no mixing of the two. That is the issue when you're talking about survival sex work. But <clears throat> you know, I was homeless for a little while. I left home to use. Um at first I was okay. I survived on the kindness of my friends and soon even that was lost to me as I started doing harder and harder drugs. I came back home, I ran away again, I came back home, I ran away again. And there came a time when I had nothing anymore. I lost everything. And I was still out there with a the drive to use. I was doing uh, coke at the time. I smoked weed for a long time, but I didn't get really, I didn't get bad in my addiction until I started doing other things. So, you know, I guess that's when I started doing what I have coined and what, what uh, I've gotten Feminist Horror Seal of Approval on as survival seduction. I would sleep with people for a place to sleep that night for drugs, for a little bit of companionship and the comfort and feeling of safety that comes with it. And <clears throat> you know, if you look at the definition of human trafficking, the term sex trafficking under number nine means the recruitment harboring, transportation, provision, or obtaining of a person for a commercial sex act. A commercial sex act, buying sex for money, for offering a place to sleep in exchange for sex, offering transportation in exchange for sex, but you know, I think that the rad femmes, and as much as they say they don't like men having the idea that they can buy sex, I think they also don't like the idea of women um, thinking that they can buy things with sex. You know, they always talk about the commodification in sex as if it's the sex that's being sold. But there are many forms of currency in the world. There are forms of currency that are newer, that we have socially constructed to have their value. Like the cash in hand that you buy things with every day. The credit cards that you swipe little machines to tell you your worth. 
but there's currency that is much older. And when you're out there doing survival sex work, you're, it's, uh, it's primal. And a lot of times it's offering sex in exchange for drugs, in exchange for a place to sleep that night where you may have access to a shower and a sink where you can wear you can wash the only pair of socks you have by hand and hang them up to dry overnight like I used to for food our cave sisters used to survive this way and I wasn't trafficked I wasn't trafficked I was out there because I put myself out there not all survival sex workers do some are victims of fire some are victims of the housing market crash some are victims of you know many things and some are not victims even some of the survival sex workers are not completely victims and survival sex work and survival seduction will always exist it will always exist because that is the currency that nature has given people some people more than others but we all have access to it you take the wrong drug you trust the wrong entity with your money and you could be there too So, <clears throat> I was using, I was stripping, I started, um, well I was, I remember laying awake in a full size bed with another dancer and her boyfriend, not that we had a sexual relationship, but we used to use together she became my using buddy and we would pull our money together to get drugs and to rent hotel rooms so that we could share a place to sleep for the night and laying there not being able to sleep the way you know some people do when you're on coke and taking inventory of my life and realizing that I hated where I had ended up so I got up and I walked to the payphone and I called the local prominent rehabilitation center drug rehabilitation center and of course I didn't have insurance so they couldn't help me but they knew of a place and they sent a cab for me and they ended up sending me to a place that was free it was a place where they send you if you have it they give you a choice between rehab and jail it was a government run rehabilitation center and that reminds me of you know Mr. Sartre's comment if women are doing this work for survival they need to have shelters and stuff to help them get on their feet. This seems like more of a failure of social services. No one in our society should be homeless without basic necessities met. It isn't really a choice and they need help to get on their feet. Sometimes it is a choice, mistress. But there is so much truth in your comment because it was my choice. Though I didn't know where the, cho the choice would lead me. I chose to leave home to use but when I was ready to get off the street 
I did find resources, and you know what? Those resources are being whittled away every day in America and being replaced with rhetoric of trafficking and black and white definitions that just don't suffice. But you're right. We're not headed for a good place. Sometimes people do need help. I did. And I didn't stay in that place as long as I should have. I was eager to get out. But I didn't, um, I didn't go back to using coke. I did coke a couple more times after that. And I remember, <coughs> excuse me, I remember feeling like shit and thinking to myself, oh my God, I feel like shit. I can't believe I lived to do this shit every day. I hate the way I feel. And after doing it again three or four more times, I just stopped. I just stopped. And, you know, that was in a period when I had run away from home. And eventually I stopped being a runaway and turned into someone who had successfully left home. Though I still struggle. We, we all do. Who doesn't? You know, I had another bad bout with drugs. And this time it was pills. And that was the last time I was really bad. That was 17 years ago. Sometimes our bodies are the currency. And we're the ones making the purchase. This is not a black and white issue. And I guess sometimes I try too hard to um, to speak of it as if it is. And maybe I'm just making excuses that that's how other people talk about it. The antis reduce it to a black and white issue. And so maybe I need to to do that as well because I know they take our stories and they co-opt them and they twist our words and they take the meaning out of our stories and inject their own meaning. They steal from us. And so sometimes I'm afraid to, to give them things to steal. But you're not antis, most of you. And I need to try and remember that. Most of you have a more solid thinking process than they do. And in letting them limit me, or letting them make me feel like that, that fear to be stolen from, they're already stealing from me because I don't say what I need to say. But for now, I will say thank you for listening and good night.